It's so good, though. It's so good. Oh, um, while I'm shouting out to everyone, mm. uh, hey, Joko. Uh, so I don't know I'm going to mess this up. Sorta's Volan Volantier. This is a while ago, but you posted all those... <laughs> the auto subtitler bits. Yes. And I just wanted to share a few of my favorites, including uh, corner ham humor. Either humor you tell on a, on a ham corner, or we're cornering the market on ham humor, which mm. seems more accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, Batman humor, Batman, Batman. <laughs> was I think both of our favorites. Yeah, that's definitely my favorite. <laughs> uh, about the other, oh dear. So that was great. Yeah. Like that. Enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, and it was DW who said the nice thing about me and music. Yeah. Thanks, DW. Thank you. And you posted Dragon Knot, I think. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and it was Ambitious Spider who likes Melvin's. Yeah, you totally did list Electric Wizard. Also, Bellish. I, I like everything that you listed. It's great. What's your favorite Electric Wizard? I'll admit Bishop's I think people are getting to know your taste enough to the point where, like, they, they kind of know. They kind of know. I know. Yeah. Totally. It's because I won't shut up about it. It's because all I do. <laughs> right fun. now. Here's the thing, is that by next year it'll be I know, it'll be, it'll be different. <laughs> I know, I was on a huge, yeah, I was on a huge film kick last year. Yeah. I, before I, that, it was baseball. I have, like, I, baseball was the weird outlier, um, but, like, I usually... It is usually more media-oriented. I, and I, I don't stop liking those things. I just usually like cycle around them. Mm -hmm. Like which one, one gains prominence. Also, Choco, yes. Um, I'm a mis misfits fan too. I mean, we might have said something misfits related that prompted you to say that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did we? It was. Yeah, I remember what I said about it, which is oh. that I'd seen more misfits T-shirts than listened to misfits songs. Oh yeah. So, totally. That's fair. I like misfits a lot. I, I, yeah. I'm woefully uneducated when it comes to music. Oh. It's just kind of you know, the way I am. We should we should listen to some misfits. The difference is I have a shitload of esoteric knowledge about video games. You that do. No one cares. No, about. way more. Than, yeah, way more than me. <laughs> I've also I I probably just hmm. raw numbers played a lot more video games. Oh than yeah, me. no, absolutely you have. Like by a, a huge margin, I think. <laughs> It is, it is like, before Magic, it was like my only hobby. Yeah. And Magic stepped in in a big way in like 2010 through 13, maybe. Yeah. And then um, I kind of fell off a little bit because I couldn't really afford the Magic anymore as mm -hmm. much. Um, I was like drafting every, every week and playing standard every week and traveling for tournaments and stuff. And like, that was a lot. It was a lot of money to spend, yeah. especially on like keeping up decks. Like, if you're trying to stay competitive and standard, you have to spend a lot of money on cards, and hopefully, you're getting enough games in where you are at least winning, so that you can defray your costs somewhat. But yeah, like, it's always a losing a losing proposition in general. Like, you are spending money on entertainment. Like, never get it twisted. But no. because of that, like, and and the fact that I ran into medical bills later, I just yeah. you know, I couldn't afford it anymore. No. I still I still pay attention. I, a lot of the podcasts I listen to are magic related, and I, I like to say, do a, a, the occasional draft. Ryan's really good at magic, also. Is I was I was competitive, and I was definitely like a, a shark in our in our you know oh, yeah. local game store. That doesn't necessarily mean a ton, but you know. But it was it was yeah, nice to no, you're 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 good. Have pretty decent expectations I'm of not. going to a tournament and placing. Yeah, absolutely, very consistently. Especially think, at the drafts. Like, at the, at the drafts, I don't think there was ever a draft I didn't place. No, that's not true. There were a couple drafts I didn't place, but, like... And then when... Our, I, I kind of was part of the reason why our local game store, the Gamers Armory, started yeah, doing magic. Absolutely. And so what I would do is I would just go in on Friday nights and try to make sure the draft would fire by just convincing people to play. Mm -hmm. And that built the community. And then... Later, we started doing standard on Thursday nights, which is where you bring your own deck and play. And for the first two months that we were getting that event to fire, I won every week. Yeah. <laughs> it was absurd. But it was because no one no one at the store was really at the competitive level yet, and I was like going online and looking up deck lists and stuff, and that's kind yeah. of a different, different move. You just also have a good brain for it in like a way that I, 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 I never was able to like get get on your own. Yeah, level. and the thing is, like, I don't know that it's like magic. Magic is weird. Like, 
for for different people it can be very different yeah. like there's there's people out there who are super technical about it and who run numbers and who just jam games over and over yeah and like take notes and stuff and me like i pick up a deck and i go to the tournament and i just kind of go with what i believe to be right and it usually works out pretty well but i usually can't explain to someone like what's important in a given matchup right. like how i should be sideboarding i just kind of go by instinct and it, and it usually works out <laughs> I'm just a very intuitive player when it comes to magic. I like flavor a lot, so that yes. was like that was more my. Thing. I feel like if at some point we should do like a flavor draft, and you should be the flavor judge. <laughs> oh, see, that would be dope. Where like, like the cards have to work based on flavor interactions, like, oh, not necessarily see, based on printed rules. Like as a kid, like I like I wanted to do, like it would just be like a particular card and like the, the aesthetic feel of like mm. a color and stuff. Like is so cool. That was that was that was definitely more my emphasis when I was a kid. Yeah, but. I didn't really hit on the cerebral aspects of it until I yeah. rediscovered it in 2010, I think, yeah. as an adult. I, I still actually really like playing. Like, I would like to play again. I think I just... I'm really bad in a, in a draft environment. Like, I like when we were doing, like, a... Um, Sit around the table, play Commander pre con Yeah, c- Commander is super fun. Yeah, like, that was... That, that, I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah, if... if uh, you are the kind of person who, like Corey, really enjoys the flavor of Magic and getting to see a whole bunch of crazy cards yeah, do interesting totally. stuff. Commander is the format for you. Um, what is it, it? EDH is like that. EDH is the old name. Commander is the official yeah. Wizards of the Coast name for it. Um, but it's where you play a hundred card deck. Every card has to be different except yeah. for basic lands. And one of, one of your creatures is a legendary creature that is is your commander. Or no, <laughs> your whatever. Yeah. How do I get in here? I don't harder. know. I'm going to have to go back up the outside, I think. Um, but it's a lot of fun, especially because you can do more than two people. And you start with a higher life total, and you get to do partial Paris mulligans, which yeah. I'm not going to explain, but basically is a more forgiving mulligan uh-huh. system. that lets you yeah. more reliably get the cards you want. You know what I think I was... Oh, nice. You know what I think I was especially bad at, actually, was like... I was really bad at without experience, like getting the sense of a set. Mm-hmm. So, like, drafting was really hard, but... um. Honestly, like, what, what do you? What's the thing you do at a pre-release? Sealed. Sealed is really hard for me. Like, crazy hard for me. Um, yeah, sealed is where you're given usually six packs, yeah. uh, six boosters unopened, and you are to build a limited deck, which is forty cards, based on <sighs> just what's in the pool. And it is it is pretty challenging um, to, you know, get to the point where you're making consistently good choices. Right. Um, I, yeah, I get anxious about silly things though. So like that kind of can like it's, it's just like overwhelming. anxiety does not help you in a tournament setting at all. No. Like it, it is important to if if you're if you're going to be trying to you know do a lot of tournaments, it is important to try to mentally disconnect yourself from right. you know your ego from your results and stuff like that. Yeah, and like magic is really good at teaching you to accept loss and to accept like. The, the difference between when mm-hmm. you know variance has caught you but you made good decisions versus yeah. you made a mistake and like true in that moment embracing that understanding and trying to mm-hmm. repair it in the future and not getting upset about it like yeah magic is a great <laughs> great way to learn from other people how not to <laughs> react to to gaming issues and losses and stuff I think that's very true um, I, I've known a lot of people who played magic and who were, had terrible attitudes about it and would get very upset about losing or whatever. Especially because it, I was often beating them. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, and they'd be like, ah, oh, you, you just drew that exact card right when you needed it. And it's like, well, it's not really how this works, actually. Yeah. It teaches you a lot about math. I spilled on myself already. I just, I literally just opened <laughs> the water. I hope that didn't come through too. Oh, well, that, that snippy snap? Yeah, that's sorry about snippy that. Snippy snap, I'm sure it's fine. Snippy snap, sorry about that. Nice. But you're right. But yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for magic. Look at all these potions. I also, I don't know, I learned a lot about yeah. kids, because I actually ran mm-hmm. a, a league for, for kids at the local store, um, because... One of the shop owners wanted to start a event for for magic younger younglings, younger people younglings. who couldn't afford to just you know buy into standard yeah. land draft every week. So something more inexpensive but still fun for them. And totally, 
That was a fun experience. I ran that for two years. Yeah. I think that's really cool that you did that. I, I, I'm still super proud of that program. It's still going on mm-hmm. under the leadership of another person. Um, yeah. My friend's Tyler. Um, and as far as I know, it's still pretty successful. They still get, like, I think two dozen kids out every week. That's awesome. To play. That's really cool. Saturday nights. Spending their Saturday nights, you know, socializing, playing card games. That's really dope. I mean, that's a nice thing. And for... I think it teaches them a lot of stuff. I know I definitely saw some kids over the that short two years just really develop into, you know, better better people, you know. It's nice to have a social space like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's a genuine, like... Especially nice because kids who are into fantasy and stuff, mm-hmm. kids who are more labeled as nerds or whatever, yeah. tend to have a fewer outlets for live social interaction, like totally. face-to-face with other people, uh, especially their age, so it was... That's a really good point. It was a good outlet. I think I saw, you know, some really good social development with those kids. That's uh, a good thing, Ryan. Still in my heart. Still love all of them. I doubt any of them will ever see this, but if you're ever part of my junior league, I love you forever. You were great. Ryan is a good man. Every, every one of you. But That's very nice. Yeah. It was, it was a... A fun time in my life. And I got to play Magic with them. <laughs> and, and win a lot. I couldn't win any prizes, to make it clear. <laughs> but it, it was sort of like a bounty thing, where like if they could beat me, um, they would win stuff. Oh, that's really neat. And I had to start instituting that after I realized like they just were never beating me. <laughs> but, oh. It was fun for them, because like I would, I would usually end up with a lot of spare boosters from drafts and stuff. Yeah. And it was like totally trivial for me to give them that stuff. Oh yeah, and that's like a big deal. And it was yeah, it was a huge deal to them. They loved yeah. it. So. Um, yeah. My my most favorite wizards thing recently mm. um, was uh, Alesha. Yeah, Alesha, she who smiles at death, or just Alesha. Yeah, Alesha who smiles, smiles at, at death, death, which is the dopest thing ever. Um, a, but also um openly trans character mm-hmm. which is hella badass it's, it's pretty exciting it was very pretty cool. exciting development um, they're doing more of that stuff as well they're trying yeah. to be very inclusive um, one I of love that. the head of the creative department at, for magic is his name is Doug Byer Bayer I'm not sure mm-hmm. how it's pronounced but um, he has also he also has a tumblr where he answers questions from the public well, oh but yeah not nearly at the volume that Rosewater does but okay and he he is very open about you know we are trying to make magic as inclusive as as our as our audience is. Yeah. And so, sorry, I'm trying to remember. No, what no. Have life. Oh, no, it's so this. cool. Like they gave Alesha a whole backstory, like where she named herself, mm-hmm. like after demonstrating her valor in battle. Mm-hmm. It was very cool. Yeah, it is a super super cool thing. Um, and they're, they're like I said, they're doing more of that kind of stuff. I think part of it is like. In the end, in a property about magical combat, it is yeah. hard for, like, sex issues to really come into play at all. Yeah. But they have that opportunity in the form of the creative writing that they do to back up the story. Absolutely. And so, while you may not see it on cards, um, like, obviously, it's still out there. It yeah. still is a thing that well, exists. I mean, and the cool thing is they, I don't know, they didn't introduce Alesha as, like, a, you know, like, really, like, make it a wild spectacle. It was just like, Alesha is this woman character. And oh, by the way, she's trans. Yeah. It was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, the card doesn't indicate it at all. Mm. She just looks like a badass... Oh, hey, this is the thing we wanted. Oh, it's is just... this what it's, we came here it's for? It's just chilling and I... Wait, is it really? Is I'm just hanging in a chest? Just make sure I have everything <laughs> that we needed, but... Wow. So... It's 45 minutes of wandering around. There is a treasure chest we missed, but that is the bottom here. So if I had oh, not awesome. missed this treasure chest, we could just exit. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do... Aspel. I don't know what that is. Anyway, hang on one second. I'm going to do a safe state here. BRB. Okay. So yeah, we're going to make our way back to this other treasure room that I missed because it was in a yeah hidden in a set of monster doors that I just fully ignored. Um, and then we're going to get out of here. The, the crystal rod. That was what we came here yeah, for. We were trying to remember the name of the thing that was at the bottom we, of Because we needed to get into the, the Tower of Mysidia, Mysidia right? Tower, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't think this was a weird... I think I might have mentioned this to you before. The weird, interesting... Like, I feel like fantasy games have been doing that lately. Um, 
you may know Pathfinder mm-hmm. also because they have like a I guess a stable of characters that are like in their promotional materials and mm-hmm. stuff but they have a, um, a tra- they also have a trans barbarian like half orc character or something like oh, that that's pretty cool. which is really cool but there's like this weird like a uh, trans barbarian character thing like in uh, Rat Queens are you familiar with this? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a sword and sorcery comic but it's all it's like and oh yeah they're yeah, all like yeah. guilds you have mentioned this to me, yeah, yeah and they're um so it's a guild of women but I'm pretty sure one of, I, I could be wrong about this but I'm pretty sure one of the barbarian woman is also trans in that one too and then in help us brave <laughs> brave help us great warrior help us brave warrior one of the two it's another comic with a trans barbarian character Man. named Leo it's like a it's like a thing I think part of it is nice. like trans communities are marginalized. But also nerd communities tend to be marginalized. And so I feel yeah. like there's probably a more significant overlap there than maybe in other media interests. That's so like, you know, like fantasy properties, just sort of like nerd shit. Video yeah. games, role-playing games, board yeah, games, totally. all that shit. Like, ah. Uh, like, I, f- I feel like there's probably more overlap there. And so I think it behooves developers of these games and of these properties to appeal to their audience not only you know for moral reasons but also the simple fact yeah. that you want to see yourself reflected in the media and, and in the entertainment that you consume yeah rep- representation is super important yes absolutely. um and i think what's cool it's like some of those are smaller you know they're single creator thing so it's like if somebody is personally you know wants to advocate or something like that they can do that mm-hmm. uh, um i think it's really cool on, on the topic of cool trans characters, um, I don't think you've watched any of it yet, but Sensei on Netflix. I have not yet. No. Uh, it's the new Wachowskis show. and It does sound interesting. There's like, just at the time. There's like issues with Lana Wachowski that the community has in general for like... I guess... I, I don't know all the specifics, but there's there's certain criticisms there like of... Uh, um, racism, I guess? But... um. Hmm. I don't know the details. I mean, without context, it's hard to comment it's, on that. Yeah, I, I can't really comment. I just know that that Chris is out there. But, Sensei actually has, like, so, I, the the if you haven't seen it, the basic premise of, it's kind of like a Cloud atlas kind of thing, where it's like a number of intersecting storylines, mm-hmm. and there's eight main characters, mm-hmm. and they, what happens is, like, this angel dies and gives them all, like, a weird telepathic awakening, so all of their lives interconnect. Hmm. Um, but one of the characters is a trans woman, played by a trans woman, in a lesbian relationship, an interracial lesbian re- relationship, wow. which is like the dopest thing ever. That's that that cool. it's actually, it's actually out there. Like I just thought that was the coolest thing because, aside from Laverne Cox, I don't know of any other trans women on TV. Oh, the Laverne Cox is great. Laverne Cox is incredible. I mean, she's just awesome. Like both. As an actress, and also just as, like, a, a personality in the world, like, I don't know. Everything I ever hear about her is just, like, the coolest I, shit. I, I was just talking to one of my friends, and, because this is about the, um, like, there was this really, like, turfy article on, uh, New York, New York Times. What do you mean when you say turfy? Oh, t- uh, a turf is a, a trans-exclusive radical feminist. Oh. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. What? Yeah, getting hyper political here but uh, on New York Times there was an article that was like essentially a turf like anti-trans piece but my, like, one of my friends was just like we wish just like Laverne Cox could just like speak for the <laughs> queer community like at all times just like because she's so perfect about it like she she responded well to the to criticism like very even handedly and kindly uh, about the Caitlyn Jenner mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. Um, but like because Laverne Cox is just like really kind and but also keeps all these issues in mind like it's just great Man, that has really brought out the worst in a lot of people. Oh shit, man. Facebook is fucking depressing as shit about that. Even, like, I've had a couple conversations with coworkers. Have you really? Like, they're still using ma- male pronouns and stuff. And it's like, dog, her name is Caitlin. She is a woman. Like, respect that. <laughs> She's like, fucked. I know, like... Bare I, minimum. Just oh respect my God. Like, there's a certain... Like, I, I kind of am in, like, a bubble sometimes. Like, and I don't realize that... Like, you kind of forget that there are, you know people who don't <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean it's it's rough yeah it's kind of crazy sometimes and I'm just know. like there's so much going on I'm just like that. looking at them flabbergasted and just like I don't know this job is so shitty that like I don't really care about people's feelings too often so it's yeah. like what the fuck are you talking about like you're just being like super ridiculous I don't know yeah I, I'm not I'm not gonna go off but like it's just 
No, just cool. some, some crazy shit sometimes that people say. I know. I keep finding... I mean, yeah, it brought out some bad commentary. Just on a lot of people and oh, news media seen, articles. Did you see Mike Huckabee's thing? Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Oh, like the weird, like... Like... like if, if I, I could have pretended, if I, I could have pretended I was a, I was a girl in high school, I would have gone on a girl. There's like so much fuck girl fucking wrong with that <laughs> shit. Like, oh my god! Holy shit, dude! I know the bathroom issue is so fucked because like, it, I the the complete and total irony too is that trans women in bathrooms are almost universally the 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 recipients of violence, not the mm-hmm. perpetrators yes. of violence. I don't think there's a single recorded case of a trans woman assaulting anyone in a bathroom. <laughs> it just doesn't. It's not a thing that happens. I mean, it's not funny. It's just, you know... No, it's just, I mean... It's the ridiculous. Mike Huckabee thing is ridiculous. Yeah. Old white people. Oh, man. We took it... What was a deep cut? That was a deep cut from yeah. Good Friends Gaming. But mm. the representation is cool. Also, um, have you guys watched Transparent? No. What is really? That? It's an I've Amazon series. Um, oh, really? Yeah. It's, a, it's um, a show about an older... Like... It's this... Really, it, it like it starts and it's like the dad of the family, mm-hmm. and all the kids have moved out. But um, uh, she's a trans woman. Mm-hmm. It's played by somebody. It's it's not an actual trans woman actor. It's like this. But this, it, it's kind of cool. The series, like I, I watched all of the first season. Like ha- the second season isn't out yet. Um, but it almost focuses more on just like, oh man, it fucks up their family so much. Like, but their family's just kind of weird and fucked up anyway. Mm. Um, but it's still really cool to have stories about trans characters. Yeah. And, like, especially an older trans character. Basically, like, she couldn't come out and she couldn't, um, like, transition openly, give, just given the nature of the time and family. Hmm. So it's like, she's divorced from her wife, and, like, the kids have all moved out, so now she can just do it. We just found a silent B, and I have no idea. Silent B. It's not a spell book, it's just... It's my rep. What? I'm gonna have to figure that out. Oh, hang on, I have my silent B, actually. Maybe, maybe it tells us. This is. This I, it's hard to Google the items too because. Silent uh, they, Bell. Silent is. Bell. Is it just an item? Is that just a regular item? I have no idea. Anyway, um, so what we're gonna do now is exit this place. Yeah. Uh, I guess it who we... Oh, also, um, real quick after that crazy deep cut, uh, Ga Rocks, thanks for your post. And also, um, I, I, you said hopefully there aren't too many more games that dragged on for you guys, and even more. Hopefully, the end of Final Fantasy II will bring you around so we can end on a high note. And we, I just wanted to say that we totally agree, and we yeah. also want to end on a, the highest possible note. And then we'll jump into three and, and Legend and keep this train rolling. Yep. Yeah. Also, your point about the mechanics was really cool in Legend. That's, I think, that's the coolest thing for us so far. At least for me. What's that? And Legend, that the mechanics are so... I don't... He, I think he... Like, I don't it better than I do, but... Um, that they're very flavor-inspired. I'm right? a big fan of mechanics that are extremely complicated in order to capture a specific concept. Mm-hmm. And that's... Yeah, I agree. The mutant, the humans, augmenting themselves, like, manually. Yeah, through, like... Uh, Galrox described them as performance-enhancing drugs or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I did like that. It's just really cool. Yeah. I do think I like the idea I, I'm I'm personally not a favor not in favor of like complication for the sake of complication like I sure. think I think that they are definitely trying to portray a flavor as as honestly yeah. as possible but at the same time I do think that there are probably ways to convey that flavor that are not so obtuse um yes which is just a, a, a personal feeling of mine that like I feel like this could be done in a way that is not quite as complicated. <laughs> like, I don't know. No. I, I, don't, I don't know really how to formulate that thought in, into, you know, a more cohesive statement, but coherent statement. I mean, I get where you're coming from, though. Because yeah. 2 is very obtuse. Yeah. But, uh... I, I like that they're experimenting. I, it's weird. I don't know if this is what I'm going to say is going to make any sense, but Final Fantasy Legend in particular really reminds me... In elementary school, we had this game that we played. Like, it was part of the school thing. But it was, like, a weird quest. But you could, like, collect items. And 
it, so it was school? weird. Yeah, and it was like it was very strange. It was like an adventure game, but you could collect all these sort of items and like advance through the game, and like it had all these inputs. But it the way the mechanics of that game worked, like I just Final Fantasy Legend reminds me of it. It's like you're on a on a quest, like and it had some sort of strange but sort of innovative little mechanic that was like, oh, you're a mutant, so therefore this should happen. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to describe that really, but. It, that that thing had always inspired me as a kid to like want to make up games mm-hmm. because it, it was so inventive and like you could add things into it. I don't know. It's like a weird pre D and D for me. Yeah. Do you know what Aspel is? No, I'm gonna take a minute and try to figure out what all these things are. Yeah, we'll be right back. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on you. Yeah, let's take a minute.